Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed of a from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. I may not have all the time to just teach on them. I just want to list them and we'll pray. No eye has seen, no ear has heard. Someone in the media, I just saw the power of God. And I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what God has prepared for me. Submit to your work in me till the Christ be formed in me, till your glory be formed in me, till your power rests on me. So I submit to your work in me till Christ be formed in me. Pillar number one. Please write if you can. If you're with the Holy Ghost, that's fine. You came to church. This is what this is about. The seven doctrinal pillars that make up this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. This is the first pillar. Seven of them God has given the message of salvation. This is the first and the greatest mandate that we have. Please listen, Koinonia Global. Everyone who is part of this vision, I want you to hear. This represents the jurisdiction of our call, our assignment, the mantle that works upon this vision. Number one is the message of salvation. John 3, 16 and 17. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son john 3 16 and 17 that whosoever believeth in him listen carefully should not perish but have everlasting life 17 says for god did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved our first mandate as a ministry is to see to it that the revelation of jesus as savior reaches the ends of the earth in order of priority the greatest task and assignment upon this vision and indeed i believe it extends to every true commission of jesus christ across the globe is the message of salvation predicated upon the fact that all have seen romans chapter 3 and verse 23 and 24 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of god this is the verdict of God as touching the fallen man. Verse 24, it says, Being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Romans chapter 10, and when you read from verse 10, Romans 10 and verse 10, here's what it says, that with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11, we're reading to 13. He said, For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him, hallelujah, shall not be ashamed. Verse 12. It says, For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek when it comes to the need for salvation. There is no difference between the educated and the uneducated. There is no difference between Yoruba, Hausa, Igbo. There is no difference between the Spanish, the Indian, the Caribbean. As far as the need for Jesus is concerned, it says, For the same Lord is rich over all who call upon him. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our assignment is to propose Jesus as Savior, to reveal the plan of redemption. I have told you, the gospel of salvation is a revelation of the Father's love 
revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of Jesus his son are we together now to the end that men and creation listen carefully that as you place your faith upon Jesus you would receive the life of God that is the promise that we have been given we must let the nations know that Jesus saved not just that Jesus gives prosperity in order of priority the salvation of their soul is far superior to prosperity and any other thing this is why we travel from pillar to post this is why we carry the burden of the gospel across the nations it is more than just an exegesis of truth you only transform people who are saved remember in this house i have taught you that the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation the greatest need of an unbeliever is not welfare welfare may provide a momentary succor jesus is the answer for the world today above him there's no other jesus is the way Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Nada o kaka sunanka ubangi chika isaya bo nagir mama sunanka ubangi ji. Ninada o kaka sunanka o bangi chika isaya bo nagir mama sunanka. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. For as long as he keeps us alive, and for as long as there is breath in our nostrils, we will let the nations know that he died for them. That there is a way out. They must not go to hell. The Holy Ghost is walking with us. He says, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you. This is why we are doing our UK conference. This is why we are going to the US, Canada, and as many places as he would take us. This is why we travel from pillar to post within and outside this nation. Sometimes you are tempted to ask, why this stretch? I saw our father in the Lord, Daddy Gio, and at his age, this man still travels from pillar to post. And one time I got to a discussion with one of his people and I said wow daddy is still traveling like this won't he rest and they laughed he said I will rest when I get to heaven now that is a warrior indeed that for as long as he's alive and breathing with this body even if it means to spend it for him the gospel the message of salvation Believers, anybody who is not harvest conscious, mission conscious, is not truly connected to this vision. The first pillar that drives what we do, the first message is the message of salvation. Number two, very quickly, what is the second doctrinal pillar that drives this vision? The message of transformation. Write it down. Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.